Thank you for the opportunity to present this paper related to youth and collective action in forested areas at this virtual conference. My name is Carolyn Peach Brown and I am recording this uh, presentation in Canada. As we can see from this satellite image, the continent of Africa has been blessed with a lot of forest, the largest area being the Congo Basin Rainforest, which is the second largest contiguous rainforest in the world. For my presentation today, I will first uh, give an overview of the demographics of Africa and then define what we mean by the term youth. I will rely on uh, some field research during my presentation as well as uh, a review of the literature. I will present information about how youth are dependent on forests, their involvement in collective decision making, and then uh, suggest some strategies from the literature for further involvement of youth in collective action in forested areas of Africa. As we can see from this figure, Africa is a very young continent in comparison to other parts of the world. Half of the population of Sub-Saharan Africa is under the age of 18, and the median age of the entire continent is 25 years old. With this demographic, it is, it is therefore expected that the number of young people will continue to grow and is not expected to reach its peak for at least 25 years. So how do we define youth? As we can see from this table, different organizations define it in different ways, generally based on age in years. But in many parts of the world, including Africa, the term youth is defined culturally. That is whether or not is per, a person is seen as having taken on adult responsibilities. That is, have they finished their education, gotten married and had children. When we're talking about youth, it is important to recognize that while we can make some generalizations, youth is not a homogeneous category. Young men and women differ based on uh, class and ethnicity and, of course, their gender. But in general, uh, young people today are better educated than previous generations. But in, despite this higher level of education, they are often un, underemployed relative to that education and they work at insecure, low-wage jobs. A lot of youth migrate from rural to urban areas in Africa, particularly to pursue education. But sometimes young people leave rural areas to seek employment or because land is scarce for agriculture or just to seek uh, more amenities that might be available in rural areas. However, despite this out-migration trend, actually most young people in rural areas actually live in rural areas in Africa. And in forested areas, they're very much dependent on the forest for their livelihood, in many ways similar to their parents' generation. So some of the research I'm going to present was conducted by one of my graduate students in the eastern part of Cameroon where she did surveys of 120 young people, both men and women, aged age 19 to 30 in six different communities. As we can see from uh, this figure, when asked about their sources of livelihood, young people talked about agriculture being very important. This was important for both young men and young women, particularly shifting cultivation but also agroforestry systems of cacao or coffee were also important. Young uh, men and women also collect non-timber forest products and they hunt and fish um, as well. Uh, we can also see that they pursue other livelihood strategies such as skilled or unskilled labor and some were still dependent on their families or were students. But as we can see as well, uh, whereas there are many similarities between the livelihood strategies of young men and young women, there are also some differences where in general uh, young women uh, tended to fish more and uh, young men were more involved in hunting in the forest. Some of this forest dependence is for food or to meet subsistence needs, but young people also gain a livelihood from the sale of forest products. In particular, these are various non-timber forest products as well as collecting firewood uh, for sale. And young people also uh, sell agricultural products, particularly annual crops, and 
particularly young women, are more involved in uh, commercial activities of preparing uh, uh, food for sale or also uh, palm wine. When we turn to thinking about how involved young people are in collective decision making in uh, forested areas, we can see from these results that young people are generally not involved in traditional decision making authorities. In this area of Cameroon, there were community forests and in general, they were not involved in those forest management committees. However, if there was a youth representative in any of these uh, committees or these decision making organizations, then it was a young man, not a young woman. But we can also see that young people are active in other organizations in the communities and often play leadership roles. And so they may, uh, may be engaged in uh, women's groups, or various work groups uh, that accomplish different tasks, savings and loan groups, and also groups within the church. And both young and men and most young men and women were involved in these groups. This quote from a key informant uh, provides some insight into perhaps some of the reasons why uh, young people are are not so involved in uh, some of these decision-making organizations in uh, in Africa. And so we can see that it's often because of cultural tradition uh, that limits the involvement of young people in uh, some of these uh, uh, collective decision-making organizations. And in particular, young women are often, uh, for traditional reasons, not given access to decision-making in the, those types of organizations. And when asked why they felt they were not further involved, young people said that they were often not taken seriously by their elders and they felt that their voices were not welcome. And many felt that they were, they were mainly viewed as laborers uh, because of their youth and enabled to, to do a lot of different tasks. But we can see that there are tremendous opportunities for young people to be involved in collective decision making in forests because they actually are very dependent on forests for their livelihood and because they have an important stake uh, in those forests, they should be involved in their sustainable management going forward. In comparison to previous generations, young people are highly educated. They are much more mobile uh, among rural areas as well as between urban and rural areas. And because they, uh, of this uh, level of education and level of mobility, they've been exposed to different things and they can bring those innovative ideas into the uh, decision-making space. Uh, if given the opportunity. And as we saw with some previous slides, young people actually are very involved in many different types of organizations and communities and often in leadership roles. And in those situations, they've learned a variety of skills that can be uh, therefore brought to bear in various uh, decision-making organizations related to forests. So then what might be some strategies to further increase their involvement in collective decision making in forested areas. I'll just present a couple of examples from the literature. One is from Guatemala, where there was a deliberate attempt to engage young people to, to envision their future in rural areas through various workshops. And then based on these workshops, the participants took what they learned and then they had shared it with other young people in the community and with uh, the broader um, broader people within the community. And this was observed by the elders, by the decision makers. And as a result of these workshops, young people were therefore invited to have a more active and deliberate role in decision making within various aspects of community life. A completely different example is from Ethiopia, where often young people do not have access to land. And through this uh, project, they were given access to rehabilitated communal land. The young people formed a co-op and they were able to then therefore manage uh, that communal land as a group. They were very successful in this process of collective decision making and able to provide a sustainable livelihood for themselves going forward. And so these are just some of strategies that perhaps could be used to further involve uh, young people in collective decision making in forested areas. So in closing, I'd like to thank you for your attention and also acknowledge those who participated in the research in Cameroon and also the funders as well as our collaborator, the Center for International for Forestry Research. And these are the references uh, for some of that research in Cameroon.
well as the other references that were cited throughout the presentation. Thank you so much uh, for your attention.